Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of TV. The month is March, and the madness shall commence. I know everybody wants to get through filling out all those brackets. You're looking at teams that you've never seen before on TV, wondering who is this team, and what team should I pick. This is TV. This is what we do. We're going to help you get through all the brackets. I can't pick the teams for you, but what I can do is help you navigate through some things and give you some nuggets and helpful hints to get you through them. So let's get right to it, shall we? Midwest bracket up first. The top four seeds in the Midwest bracket are Kansas, Oklahoma State, Georgetown, and Maryland. To me, this is the toughest bracket in the entire NCAA tournament only because Kansas is the number one team entering the tournament as well as the number one seed in this bracket. But they got beat by Oklahoma State and Tennessee and two other teams that are capable of beating them are Ohio State with potential player of the year Evan Turner as well as Georgetown coming off their tough loss in the Big East but we all know how good a conference the Big East is so this right here is a real tough bracket pick wisely and make sure you do your homework now throughout the um, college tournament usually you get picked on your body of work in terms of your seeds are based on your performance throughout the season therefore Kansas had the best season so that's why they're the number one team usually what they want to do is they want to have the strong teams play the weak teams for, and have the the cream rise to the top at the end so thus for the difference in the seeding and why you have a 16 playing a one in the opening round in saying that for some reason don't ask me why Every year in the tournament, a 12 seed always beats a 5 seed. In this Midwest bracket, I really don't think that's going to happen. I think Michigan State is tournament tested. Last year, they lost in the national championship game. A lot of those guys are back, and they're veterans, so they're not going to lose this game. Let's move on to the East bracket. In the East, the top four seeds, you have Kentucky, West Virginia, New Mexico, and Wisconsin. This is a very interesting bracket only because the team that I like, and you know, I got a connection only because, you know, I like John Wall, is the Kentucky Wildcats. They probably have the youngest, most talented team in the tournament. I mean, one night you think these guys can't be beat, and another night you wonder how can these guys win another game. But they're freshmen, so they're very up and down. West Virginia, a very tough team. These guys have patented the one-point win blowouts. I mean, these guys could be down 15 points in the first half and make it look like, hey, there's no way we could come back, and boom. Two minutes left in the game, Deshaun Butler hits a big three, and they go up by one. Other than that, there aren't that, really, there aren't that many key interesting matchups in terms of games that you, know, you might want to watch other than this. 12-5 matchup here. Very interesting. Cornell, they have a seven-footer. And in college, there really aren't a lot of natural seven-footers that, that can actually play the game of basketball. And Cornell has one. And I mean, hey, come on. You're going to tell me that would, by playing in the Ivy League, these guys are smart and they're, gonna, they're not going to make the right decisions? Coming out of the A-10, though, Temple's real tough. That's going to be a real interesting game. Pick them? I don't know. I'm thinking this might be that 12-5 upset. Another interesting game you might want to watch for, I'd say, is uh, Marquette and Washington. Marquette, a real tough team. They like to shoot a lot of threes. Washington really like to get up and down the field and shoot a lot of threes. This might be a high-scoring game, but I think Marquette moves on. Now, you know when usually you're watching ESPN or you're watching all these big-time broadcasts, and right now they have the nice fancy zhoof, and they have that nice big graphic? Well, here, on the count of three, we'll all say it together. One, two, three. Woof! Let's go to the other side of the brackets now. We have the West. The West, the number one seed is Syracuse. Number two seed, Kansas State. Number three seed is Pittsburgh. Number four seed is Vanderbilt. In my opinion, I think this is one of the weakest brackets in the, in the entire tournament. And this is built pretty much for you, you, for Syracuse to run rush on. Syracuse with their 2-3 zone, they're pretty much built to play in the tournament. And if you're not used to playing Syracuse or the 2-3 zone, it's going to be a long afternoon. So I see Syracuse going far. And they also see Pittsburgh and Kansas State meeting up. That's a tough game right there because Kansas State, I mean, you know, they really have a whole bunch of unknown guys, but they all play good as a team. And Pittsburgh, I mean, hey, they're veteran tested coming out of the Big East. So, as I said before, choose your teams wisely when you want to move on. But, as I said earlier, the 12-5 upset, I think this is the game that we all should look at right here. UTEP and Butler. Butler, they're a team that does things the right way, and they make the nice little skip passes, and, you know, they do things the way they should be. Done. UTEP, 
They're just a bunch of guys that run up and down the court, throw the ball up, dunk, and shoot a lot of threes. I mean, when you see the 12 seed, you wonder, hey, if they're so good, why didn't they get seeded higher? Because they lost some games that they should have won. But in saying that, I think this is the upset special right here, UTEP beating Butler. Now let's move on to the Southern bracket, shall we? We are headed by number one seed, Duke, number two seed, Villanova, number three seed, Baylor, and number four seed, Purdue. This is a very interesting bracket with a lot of interesting matchups. I mean, hypothetically, if Duke and Villanova win all their games, you could have a rematch of last year's Sweet 16 in the, fine, in the Elite 8 this year. And a lot of players from Duke last year that got trounced by Villanova, I think it was like a 15 or 20 point blowout, are still on Duke. And a lot of players on Villanova that won that game are still on Villanova. So I'm sure there's some bad blood that could be brewing between them. Another interesting game is Cal and Louisville. I mean, Louisville coached by Rick Pitino. We all know the veteran coach that he is. He's going to have Louisville ready. And Cal, they can put up points on the board. Very interesting matchup here. Number 13 and number 14, Purdue. The reason why I highlight this game is because number four seed in Purdue lost their best player at Robbie Hummel. And Sienna's coming off a good season, an o a plus 20 win season. I don't know if this is your upset special, but you might want to look at this as a possible upset. The 12-5 here, I don't really think Utah State can hang with Texas A&M. I think Texas A&M is a good team, and they're going to be a team that can really um, go far in this tournament. Other than that, you have Notre Dame, Old Dominion. I think Notre Dame can win this. I mean, Richmond and St. Mary's, there's a lot of people talking about Richmond, but I got to see them put in some work first. So that's what I have for you in terms of the college tournaments, the brackets, the way to look for them, and things to look for. Now I'd like to give you some uh, nuggets or pearls of wisdom. First off, 8 of the last 11 national champions have been number 1 seeds, meaning that in your final 4 bracket you need to have a couple number 1 seeds, meaning that Duke, Syracuse, Kentucky, or Kansas... A couple of those teams need to be in your final four bracket. And another tidbit is nine out of the past ten national champions have all had three players off the winning team drafted into NBA. Now, I'm not saying they got to be Kobe Bryant or LeBron James, but they need to be NBA caliber type players. So when you pick your teams that want to go deep into the tournament or possibly win a national championship, look for a team that has a good guard, a good big man, and a swing player that can be drafted. Those are usually the key ingredients that get you to the Final Four, the championship game, and win the championship. Okay? Good luck. Tournament starts tomorrow, so make sure that you get your brackets filled out. And I understand that, you know, everybody's busy, but what I need you to do is every night after the tournament games are done, E.TV is the place to be the next morning because I'll have your tournament updates, the buzzer beaters, the records that I won, the teams that lost, and the teams that won. So for the college tournament, you know what a place to be. See it on TV. Peace.